Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, A Monk in Cloud. In this video, I will go through a step-by-step -step process on how to build stock price predictions without writing a single line of code. We will be using the no-code approach with Amazon SageMaker Canvas. This example is not meant to be for investment purposes, but rather to showcase the ease of development of predictions. Please do not make any financial decisions based on the forecasted results. Let me go through the solution overview now. Amazon SageMaker Canvas allows building ML models using a visual interface instead of writing code. It includes pre-built ML models for a variety of use cases, including sentiment analysis, object detection on images, document analysis, and much more. You can import and join data from different external resources, including AWS S3, Snowflake, Google Analytics, and many more. For example, in this particular project, we will create a custom model using time series forecasting and import a data set stored in our local machine. So below is an architectural diagram and high level steps. So first, we will gather the historical data. And if you want to store that in an S3 bucket, you can do that. But in my case, I'm not going to store it on the S3 bucket. Instead, I'll directly import it to the Amazon SageMaker from the local machine. Next, we'll go ahead and configure the SageMaker canvas and try to predict the future, right? So this is the introduction of this project. Now let's go and collect the historical data from the Nasdaq website. So this is the Nasdaq site. I am using Tesla as my stock for this particular uh, example. If you want to use any other uh, company's uh, data or stock, you can use it. But Tesla as it is booming, I'm just uh, as I'm also interested in Tesla. So I'm using this particular stock uh, company as an example. So I'm here, I'm uh, using the historical data and I'm selecting the max and downloading the data. So once you download the data, it, you need to clean the data first. So what changes I've done, I've, I'm going to explain it now. So this is the Tesla uh, that I've downloaded here. You can see many columns here. But when I downloaded, there was some differences. I'm going to explain what are the changes that I made after downloading the data. So here in the first column, we did not have this column called ticker. So I added this one just to identify it a little easily. So and I'm using TL TSLA, which means Tesla. So date was already there. I did not modify anything. Market close. It was just mentioned as close, but I've added market just to identify easily without any space volume i did not change anything market open it was just mentioned as open i've changed it to market open high and low it is exactly the same which i downloaded it and please make sure whichever the stock that you are using you will have the two decimal point for market close market open high and low so these are the things that you need to modify from the data that you have downloaded all right so this is the first step that you need to do in order to build the stock price prediction using SageMaker. Once you have the data ready with you, the next step would be to create the SageMaker canvas. It will take a lot of time to create this one, at least a 30 minutes to set up the entire SageMaker. So what I've done is I've already created those things in the US East one region, but now I'll show you the process of creating it in another region. I have selected as US West 2, right? So once you log into the AWS console, you should open Amazon SageMaker by searching on the global search bar. So you will land the page just like this one you are seeing on the screen. Next, you just need to click on get started here and you will see something called a setup SageMaker domain. So just click on setup SageMaker domain and it will load few things for you. And here you need to fill in few details. So domain name, you can give any name. So I'm just going to use predictions as the domain name. User profile, you can give any name, but it is uh, giving a recommendation to use the default. I'm not going to change anything. I'll leave that as it is. 
Next, you will have to select an execution role. If you've already created the role, you can go with and select that. But to be, you know, really precise and you can go ahead and create a new role. So just click on this arrow and you will see click create a new role. So if you select that one, if you are a specific, uh, if you are storing the data in a specific S3 bucket, you can keep the, uh, you can only grant access to that particular S3 bucket. But if you want to uh, go with a simpler things or a simpler setup, you can select any S3 bucket and click on create role. I have already created the execution role. I'm going to select the same thing. And after this, you can just click on submit. So once you do that, you will have the SageMaker domain set up. So now I'll go back to my US East one region and I'll show you how it looks after creating the SageMaker domain, because this entire process to create the SageMaker domain, it will at least take five to 10 minutes. So to reduce that, I've already created it and I'll show you how it looks. Now I've changed my region to North Virginia. And if you see here under domains, I have created predictions and this is the ID. Please make sure your domain is in service. The status should be in service. Okay. So now what you can do is you can just click on predictions and here you will see the user profile that we had in the, in the process of creating by default, it gave us a user profile called default. So it is there and you need to launch the canvas. So to do that, you can just come over here and you will see a launch button here. And if you click on the drop down, you will see canvas. And if you open it, it will open the SageMaker canvas for you. So while you open this one, it will take some time to load the first app because that is the first time you are logging into the SageMaker canvas. It will take some time. So wait till at least 15 minutes, I would say. I waited for 15 minutes. So after that, you will see something like this, this dashboard or this website will be appearing for you. Here is exactly where your game starts, right? So here you can create new models and you can go ahead and predict your things, right? So first, after, uh, you know, loading this one, after having your SageMaker canvas, you need to import your data set. So how to do that? Click on this, you know, data set, uh, icon here. So once you click on that, you will have some preloaded data set already available for you to test. But if as we are interested in predicting Tesla stock price, we'll import the data that we have cleaned and kept, right? So this is the data that we have. And I've named it as TL TSLA 2023-0701. And I've, I've downloaded that in the CSV format. Okay. So I'll just, uh, I've just imported that one. If you see here, uh, if you want to uh, import it, it is just simple. You can just click on create and you can select tabla here and you can give a name. For example, let me say uh, example. Okay. And I'll click on create. Later on, you can select the different data sources here. You will have uh, S3, Snowflake, Redshift, Athena. But if you are storing it on your local machine, you can just click on local upload and then just upload it. That's all right. So you can select from your computer and I have that data here. I'll select that and I'll click on open. That's all you have to do and click on create data set. It will show you first hundred data sets that you have first hundred rows and you can see what is the data that you already have, right? So I've done that already to save some time. So if you can see that here, right? So next, what you need to do is create the model. To do that, you can go to my models here. If you see here, I don't have a model right now. Let me go ahead and create a new model. To do that, I'll click on new model and I'll say Tesla. Okay. I'll say TSLA and I'll click on create. Once you have that, you need to select the data set. So as we have already stored in that, uh, as, as we have already uploaded the data into the data set, it is appearing here. Uh, if you have different data sets, you can select the one that you want here. So I'm going to select this one and I'll click on select data set. Next is the process of building it. So here we need to select a column to predict. Basically you are choosing the target column, the model that you want to build, uh, which will predict your values for the column that you select here. So let's wait for some time for it to load. And if you see here, it will display 
all the columns that we have in the data set that we have uh, uploaded we have volume we have ticker market open market close low high all these details are here right so i'll select um, market close as my uh, particular target location and here once you select the target lo location it will automatically pick up the model type so based on that uh, uh, data it selected time series forecasting your model will forecast market close by using past data values to predict the future data values all right so once you have once you see this model type you just need to click on configure time series and here you need to fill in some details okay so time series forecasting configuration choose the column that uniquely identifies the item in your data set so our uh, you know column would be ticker and this one choose the column that groups the forecast by values it is optional so i'm leaving it as default and choose the column that contains timestamp i'm going to use date itself and specify the number of dates i'm going to use 30 days and here you can use a holiday schedule to improve your prediction accuracy so as nasdaq will be closed on us holidays i'll select this one and you need to select the country for holidays we are going to select uh, united states united states here and just click on save so once you click on that you will have the quick build and preview model uh, it will automatically pick up future values uh, based on the value that you have defined here it will automatically pick up what needs to be done there all right so if you see here uh, it is uh, you know mark the target here and this particular column called volume it will be taken for future values and these are the different things that we have right so once you have all these things if you see here it might take several minutes uh, if you want to validate the data you can just click on validate data and it will start validating the data it might take some time depending on the uh you know data that you have uh, uh my data set is having 2.5 you know k rows so it might it did not take much time if you see here it is throwing uh no issues have been found in the data set if there is any issues it will automatically detect so if there is some you know discrepancy in the data or if there is any column with an empty data set it will let you know right so later on you can just click on quick build it will start building your model it will take some 15 to 20 minutes of the time for you to build the data basically we have two types of uh, you know building here basically we have quick build which builds a model in a fraction of time compared to a standard build so it results in potentially lower accuracy in exchange of greater speed so it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the quick build for you whereas the standard build the builds uh, this build is best model uh, you know for uh, any optimized processes uh, powered by auto ml it takes longer time compared to quick build uh, but it provides more accurate results right so quick build will have less accuracy greater speed but standard build will have greater accuracy and it will take more time right so it may take around four to five hours to build a model using your data set right so now let's go back to the SageMaker here if you see here it is expected uh, the expected build time is 20 14 to 20 minutes and the build type we have selected is quick build that means our accuracy will be low compared to the standard build and the detailed process it is training the model and we have to wait for some time for this to be completed so i'll pause the video for some time and i'll come back once this analysis and the training of the model is done so let's uh, get into the prediction of the model okay all right it took more than 15 minutes for me to you know complete this model and if you see the model status right now it gives all the different uh, parameters for you to get insights from so you have the mean absolute percent error weighted absolute percent error if you do not know what are those you will if you click on this i button here it will display what are the things that you will uh, what is the meaning of mean absolute percent error weighted absolute percent error and so on and if you see our data here uh, so the impact and all those things are here column impact and you'll also get a button called a predict so if you just click on predict you will get all the different items that you need to select 
first one you can review which is fine for us because uh, this is what our uh, the data set um, you know timeline is the time range so i'm okay with that as i'm only predicting for a single item that is tesla so i'm going to select this a single item and you need to select the item here if you click on the drop down you will see tsla so i'll select the same thing and it will start giving the line chart for you so if you see here all the things all the forecasted upper bound expected thing and the lower bound will be displayed here currently today is july 1st if you see here this is the data that i have and later on you you can also see what is going to happen on the second and what what next and all the future predictions are here so till 30th of july it is predicting what you uh, you know what is the expected and what is the upper bound future uh, forecast upper bound forecast lower bound right so if you want to download this prediction you have the option to download it as an csv or you can also Im import it as a image also if you want to you know get the meaningful data out of the quicksight dashboard if you want to import it to quicksight dashboard you can also do that but i'm gonna stop it right here because this is just a simple project for you can build another project which is a complete step one to step 100 project so let's say you are using aws iot to get the data uh, such as weather data weather related data heat temperature humidity all those data you collected by aws iot then you store that data whatever the data that you collect you will store that into the dynamo db later import that dynamo db data that you collected or if you can directly store that data to s3 bucket that is still more you know good after that here in the sage maker you can predict the future right so you can try that also i i am thinking to create that project a complete project which is going to take more than one day for me to record so i'm planning for that so let me know in the comment if i want to do that project for you guys so that will help you it is kind of a mini project for all the college going students so they can uh, learn a lot from that project as well so that's it i had for this video if you're liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one